Welcome to a discussion video on the birthday attack. I hope you find it as interesting as I do. The slideshow will be available in the description. So what is the birthday attack? The birthday attack is an attack on hashing algorithms that takes advantage of the fact that the hashing algorithm always outputs a fixed number of bits no matter the input length, meaning that it's possible for collisions to occur. Collisions are where two different inputs produce the same output. You may be wondering why it's called the birthday attack. This is because it's based off the same mathematics as the birthday paradox. What is the birthday paradox? Well, the birthday paradox is the incredibly high probability that two people will have the same birthday in a room of 50 people. Just thinking about it, 365 days in a year, 50 people, that's about a 1 in 6 or 70% chance. This is actually wrong. In reality, it's about a 97% chance that two people will share the same birthday. So, how can this be possible? Well, let's have a look at the maths. Taking any one birthday, there is 49 possible matches to be made. But, if we compare every birthday to every other birthday, the probability greatly increases. Thankfully, there is an equation that is called the combination without replacement equation. n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. r in this case is 2, as the repeated amount would be 2, as we are looking for 2 birthdays, and n would be 50 for the number of people. Working this out, it comes to 1,225 combinations. Now it doesn't seem so out of the ordinary that there's a 97% chance that two people should have the same birthday. Okay, so back to hash collisions. Why is this important? Using this equation, we can calculate the probability that a collision will occur on a hashing algorithm. So let's take an example of MD5. MD5 will always return a hash that is 128 bits long. Given that there is 94 characters, upper and lowercase letters, 10 numbers and 32 symbols that are accepted by MD5, and a password of at least 20 characters long, there is 3.4 times 10 to the 38 possible hashes, and 2.9 times 10 to the 39 possible passwords. However, to generate every password hash, it would take roughly 1.4 times 10 to the 25 years. And worse, we'd have to store every hash we compute and compare it to all other hashes. This would take trillions of petabyte hard drives. Luckily, this is where our birthday paradox is of use. Plugging it into our combination equation, equation ugh, the total number of hashes and probability of, of a 99% 90, 90, chance, and then solve for k, we get 5.98 times 10 to the 19 for a 99% chance of a collision occurring. This is less than one trillionth of a percent of the original key space. Though this is still a large amount of computing still required, it's within a possible range of about 8, month, eight months on a powerful high-end PC. But remember, this is for a 99% chance of a collision. A collision could occur after 30 minutes of running, or never finish in your lifetime. That's how probability works. <clears throat> it's important to realize that this is the chance of finding two passwords with the same hash, not the same as trying to match a password to a specific hash. However, once you start finding hash collisions in an algorithm, you can use those collisions to start to figure out how an algorithm is creating hashes. In 2006, Blastomil Kilmer published his algorithm that could generate a hash collision on average in 17 seconds on a 3.4 GHz Pentium 4 processor, yet MD5 is still one of the most used hashing functions. This brings the video to an end. I hope you learned something new or got a new perspective on how hashing algorithms can be broken. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them as best as possible. Thanks for watching.